What's up guys, welcome to Daily Refinement. Today's video, I found something really cool at the flea market that I'm gonna share with you guys, but I'm gonna do something I don't normally do. I'm actually gonna share every single thing I found at the flea market for an entire year. I think a lot of you find value in things that I find. And yesterday was wild. So I got up at three o'clock in the morning to go to the flea market. It was like 30 degrees and in California, that's freezing. And I'm like, who in God's name is getting up this early to go to the flea market? I must be insane. It's freezing cold. I don't want to do it. So I get in my car, I drive to the flea market. And to my surprise, it was packed. There was like 500 people there in the morning at like four o'clock in the morning. And the reason is because it's the last flea market of the year. For this one that I go to on Sundays, um, they're not gonna open on Christmas and they're not gonna open on New Year's. So it was kind of like that last chance to get Christmas gifts and the last chance to source for 2022. So it was packed. So today I'm really excited to show you kind of the behind the scenes of how my business works. So for the whole year of 2023, I'm gonna show you guys how the sausage is made. I'm super excited. So please smash the like button, consider subscribing, maybe subscribe to this playlist and I'll see you guys inside. All right, guys, so I'm gonna go over what I look for at the flea market. So I'm pretty narrow, so I stay in my lane of women's clothing. So I'm looking for essentially two things. I'm looking for jeans, primarily women's jeans, but I will pick up men's jeans if they're available because men's jeans generally are worth more money. And I also pick up new and used thrift finds in all categories that I feel like can sell for $20 or more plus shipping and my buy cost is $4 or less. So for this experiment all year, you're gonna see that I'm gonna use a cost of goods of $4 for my thrift finds that I think are worth $20 and more. And with shipping, my aim is to get $30 per item of those items, and I get around 105 of those per week, and that's my goal for around 15 per day of that kind of stuff. With the jeans, though, my buy cost is a little bit lower, and I'm hoping to wholesale them to people for $4 a piece so they can comfortably double their money. So we actually use these boxes. It's called box number seven from the post office. These are non-flat rate priority boxes. Each box can hold around 20 pounds of clothing. So essentially what I'm doing with jeans is 15 pairs should not go over 20 pounds. So that's why I use these boxes. I create two boxes together in what I call a Franken box. And I actually put the second box on top of the first box like this and then seal it. And essentially I can use one piece of tape here, one piece of tape here to create the Franken box and they're free from the post office. And with the exception of the cost of tape, it's a really inexpensive way to create wholesale bundles. So I sell these to my customers for roughly $4 a pair, including tax and shipping. So remember, when you guys are buying wholesale, you need to count shipping and tax into your cost of goods. And also, you can file for tax exempt on every single website, including eBay and including whatnot, which is where I sell these lots. I sell 15 pairs of jeans for $50. And I'm gonna show you guys today how I sort these jeans to make lots where I think people can easily double their money. So you're buying the jeans from me for about $4 plus, uh, $4 total. And I hope you can sell them for 10 to 15 plus shipping. You should be able to comfortably double your money. And the reason why I say that is because some of the jeans if they sell for 15 to 20 dollars plus shipping, they'll make up for items that are lower. So in the wholesale game, you have to make sure there's enough meat on the bone that your customers can make money so they can reorder. At this point, I have enough customers that every single week these have been selling out completely. And I think that really starts with providing enough meat on the bone where people can double their money. Now, with the thrift items, those are more retail type items. So people aren't generally reselling those. And that, again, it narrows the amount of items that you can sell per week. So I'm only aiming to do 105 per week of these. So these bags are called contractor bags and they can hold about 50 gallons worth of stuff. I now reuse all these bags into trash bags. So some people tear them open, but that's kind of a waste of these bags because they're quite expensive. So make sure that you reuse them as much as you can. And I just designate, I put the black bags for clothing and the clear bags for jeans. And I do have these available, but most of my suppliers at the flea market also stock these so they can do it. So today I'm gonna show you guys sorting the jeans and sorting the stuff. And I'm gonna show you what brands I found, including the Bolo that looks like it's JC Penny, but it's actually super valuable. So we'll go over all that in today's video. Plus, 
We're gonna go over what certain items actually sold for, and we're gonna go over the wholesale operation on how I sell liquidation as well. So this is a jam-packed video, and this is what it's gonna be like all year, so let's get into it. All right, guys, so I'm gonna demonstrate how I actually process jeans. So a lot of people have asked me how I do this. So essentially when they're in these contractor bags, I'm looking for part of the knot that I can pull and that it will undo the entire thing. But if it's not this easy to untie, sometimes you twist this plastic part until it turns into a spear and then you can reverse push it through a hole. So the tighter you wind this, the easier it is to undo the bag. And since I have been saving these bags, I no longer need to buy trash bags, which saves money. So the jeans are gonna come this way. What we're gonna do is they're gonna have the Goodwill tag on it because 100% of my items come from Goodwill. So what I do is I used to cut these off of the tag, but now I just pull the Goodwill tag off like this and make sure I don't take this off. Cause if you pull this little, um, what are these called? Like little tab. If you pull one of the, if you pull this tab out, you can actually create a hole. So I recommend that you actually cut this off with scissors if you're going to, but I just leave this on. And my colleague Tech and Sports, when people ask what this is, he just says, this is my inventory system, but rarely have I had people ask me what that is. And since my items are pre-owned, they kind of have an idea that these are where the tag used to be. So I um, throw these away or recycle them. And then essentially what I'm doing is I am sorting these jeans by price point. So this pair of jeans is Adriano Goldschmied, which is this brand. And I actually consider this a pretty decent pair of jeans. So I'm going to include probably one to three pairs of these per lot. And that'll make up for stuff like Old Navy or Gap or maybe some lower tier mall brands. Most of the stuff I sell is mall brands. So I want to make sure that it's fair. So I'll include a nicer pair of jeans like this in the lot. So what I'm doing right now is I'm just sorting it so it's easy for me to look over the items later. So I'm pulling the tag off and I'm essentially just gonna fold it in half. And later when I'm going back through this, so I had already kind of pre-sorted this lot because this is sort of my mid-tier jean. So I can see already two pairs in a row of Adriana Goldschmied. Um, so while I'm at the flea, I'm doing my best to sort things as I go. So it's easier for me to sort later. And typically when I get here, they're already sorted into low tier and mid tier and high tier. And I'll go over some of those brands a little bit later, but hopefully this is useful. If the items require cleaning, they'll go into a different pile. If the items require repair, they'll go into a different pile, but I'm pretty careful to leave those items at the flea market. And I use a headlamp that's super bright in the morning to try to get rid of some obvious things like with jeans. If there is staining in the crotch area, no one's gonna wanna buy that. Those shouldn't be redonated, they should be discarded. So just make sure as you're sorting your different items to have a system. And I like to sort everything as soon as I get back from the flea market or the day after. I don't like things sitting around being unprocessed because they jam everything up. So um, we'll get into the next section. All right, guys. So sometimes I find items I feel like are really special. So we, maybe we can call those God tier items. And to designate the difference, they usually make the bag a little more wild. So I don't accidentally throw these in with the regular things. So um, you want to undo the bag. And you want to refrain from, again, ripping these open and wasting it because we're environmentally friendly here at a Daily Refinement. Okay, so you can see out of um, 650 jeans or so that I purchased yesterday, there's only a few that I feel are really good. And we can go over the brands all separately in just a moment. Or actually, I guess we can go through them. Um, Rag and Bone, obviously, very good. So if I was selling solo by myself, I would only pick up God tier items. I would just go through the flea market, look through everything, try to find items I think I can sell for a decent clip. So this one is Diesel. So Diesel is great. So these ones are all items I think I could profit um, close to $15 a pair. And some Adriano Goldschmied I consider really good. It depends on the model, Adriano Goldschmied, and then also condition. I like dark wash, I like skinny, I like high rise. Those all do well for me. This is Free People. So Free People sells well for me. Also, while I'm sorting these, I can look through the condition 
and I'll either sell these on my own. So this is a free people pair of jeans, but you can't see any logo. So what we need to do is check the button. So it says free people on it and that will allow you to see. And then uh, for size, I'm gonna go by measurements. This looks like around um, 14 inches um, waist to waist. So this is probably a size 28. For women's jeans, you double the waist measurement and these have a flare bottom. Very cool. Flare is definitely in. I don't know if it was ever out. Some people wear flare. <laughs> was it a super out? Yeah, it was skinny jeans for a long time. Yeah. And now flare I still feel like a lot of people wear flare. Um, good American, also a very good brand. So um, Good American is one of the lots that I have for sale in my um, store closeout return liquidation um, liquidation pallets that I buy. I bought around 5,000 pieces of Good American and we're doing those shows throughout the week. Another Rag and Bone. Spanx is very good. Y'all know Sarah Blakely. She's the proverbial girl boss, like three kids, billion dollar company, and she owns all of it. So pretty fun. Her and her husband, they own the Atlanta Hawks and a whole bunch of other stuff. Eileen Fisher is really good. But you can have it all. You can have a family, a thriving business, um, but you can't do it alone. So she literally has tens of thousands of employees and her husband is no chump either. He, uh, he like, I think he did the coconut water. Uh, Frame is a brand I pick up and I like. Um, but I think you attract what you are, not what you want. And if I was doing online dating right now, I would be maxing out my chances to find a partner. <laughs> I would be going to all the events I think is the habitat for the person that I want to date. Um, I would be swiping 14 hours a day. I've been trying to increase my odds of finding a partner because I think it's a numbers game. So um, with jeans, you can see how few jeans I have that I would sell in my um, actual eBay or Poshmark closet because there's just so much competition that um, if I was solo by myself, hopefully this is making sense, guys. This is mother. Fantastic brand, over $200 retail. Um, hopefully this makes sense that if you were a beginner, you would pick this stuff and not the bulk stuff that I'm selling. If you're more advanced and you have systems to list hundreds or thousands of items, sure, you can pick up that other stuff. But if you're just starting, you only have time to list a few items, so you have to list the best stuff. You don't have the opportunity. Like a lot of small businesses get in trouble because they sell really generic stuff. If you're going to be um, trying to make it, I think you need to sell really unique stuff. Like we can plug uh, Holly's stuff. She's making some cool ceramics. So you can see here, like these are very unique pieces. So if you are starting a business, you need something like this to command a premium price. If you were just selling gray stoneware mugs, then people are gonna buy from Ikea for $1 and not you. So you gotta really be unique and stand out. And because in the beginning you don't have supplies, resources, time to make thousands of items. So you gotta make more money per item. Hopefully that makes sense guys. Um, but as a smaller seller, you really need to focus on um, quality, not quantity. Silence and Noise is an anthropology brand. Um, I like dark wash, I like charcoal. Um, these are fun. So for me, pattern jeans sell well, especially if it's a brand like Madewell. Madewell prints do much better than the regular Madewell. Um, and I do consider Madewell um, mid-tier. The only reason this was in the God tier bag is because it's a pattern and it's cooler. Um, and then the final one is Everlane which sells really well for me on every platform. Um, so a lot of you are saying, I never find any of these brands. Well, to give you guys an idea, I have to look through 40,000 items to find these. So let's count how many there are. One, two, 20, 
21, 22. So 23 pairs of items that would go into my store if I was starting or beginning. And I look through 40,000 items to find it. So like that's 0 0.0001 of the items qualifying. So most people look through one pile, give up, and that's not really how, how it works. You need to look through the whole truckload to find just a few gems to sell. So a lot of beginners, uh, hopefully, let me know in the comment section below if this is useful because I think I, a lot of people are confused that when they're just starting, they want to list more items, but you need to list more expensive items when you're starting. That's the only way to get out of it. Like with these, these ceramic mugs, if Holly was selling these for $5, she would never get anywhere. It's too cheap for that kind of volume. So, yep, this is the God tier. All right, so I'm gonna go over some of the brands that I find to remember. The average that I'm looking for is $20 plus shipping. So I'm gonna go over how I'm thinking through these items through, and I'm also gonna talk about the bolo that I found. So I pretty much pick up every single snowboarding jacket, regardless of brand. This is the brand 686, uh, but essentially what I'm looking for is any outerwear, snowboarding pants or coats, motorcycle pants or coats, all that stuff I pick up. Um, I'm always gonna pick up stuff like Champion, um, obviously the reverse weave is gonna sell for a little bit more. Um, it's a thicker tag. Um, and I look for women's and men's. Also the um, champion crop seems to sell well for me um, in women's as well. And again, I'm never gonna be um, upset if one of the items that I buy doesn't sell for a lot because I work on averages. So I'm looking for at least 105 items that sell for $20 plus shipping, close to $30 including shipping and tax. It's sort of the sweet spot I'm looking for. And I'm looking to average under $4 for these items. I'm gonna pick up most made well, especially knits, um, jeans, and patterns. Stuff like this is kind of cool. I pick up most all over prints. This is a Rolling Stone shirt, size extra large. Actually, this would be considered vintage since it's 20 years old. And a lot of people do consider 20 years and older um, vintage these days, especially on Etsy. So this is all over print, should do super well. I'm not gonna show every piece, but show you most of the pieces and you can see them. I'm gonna be running this show on Friday and we'll put the date here on the screen so you guys can go to that show and actually buy this stuff. I'll start every single thing at a dollar. Um, but see, this champion is not reverse weave, um, so it's not as thick and as cool of a material, but this is still gonna sell for a couple of bucks. Um, Orvis is something I do find at the flea market a lot, also because they um, have Orvis available at the Costco um, booth. And the Costco booth is uh, all returns. I think the Costco returns are like sold at 18% of MSRP. So you can get Orvis for at least 50% off at the flea market even better towards the end of the day. I pick up every single thing made well, so unfortunately this is a t-shirt and won't sell for a lot of money, but with the vendors I work with, I'm picking up all of certain brands and made well is one of the brands I pick up every single item on. So I'm gonna get the really expensive pieces and the cheap pieces for the around the same price, but you just go with the flow and some people will get a good deal. I pick up all Columbia, um, all outerwear stuff. The Columbia vintage logos are bigger. Uh, this is not uh, vintage. This is another Orvis sweater. Orvis for me sells well, not for a lot of money generally, but it does, it does sell okay. Next is the North Face. I pick up all North Face stuff. This is a really nice piece, women's size large. Women's large and extra large is gonna sell uh, really well for me in the outerwear category. Also kids extra large, I will put uh, list also as women. So this is a, a kid's jersey for Chris Paul. Um, I pick up all jerseys, a lot of them. You need to be careful, make sure they're authentic before you post them. This is another North Face um, fleece. And if you guys wash and dry these with a wet towel, most of the pill, or not the pill, the, um, I forgot what this is called, but the fluff, it will raise back up, it's the loft. The loft will come back if you wash it with a wet towel. Um, next is, this is North Face khaki pants. So um, these are convertible, which means they zip in the shorts. 
You guys can see the zipper there. So these type of convertible hiking pants are really, really useful and utilitarian. Um, I pick up these in Prana, Patagonia, North Face, Columbia, they all make pants like that. All outdoor brands. LL Bean sells well for me. I really like the um, big logo. So LL Bean sells well. And this is the kind of stuff that I would normally wear for myself, but it's hard to find size large. Um, next is gonna be um, natural issue. So I like to pick up all, all over prints. There's nothing special about this shirt, but I'm hoping to sell for eight or nine bucks. And I just think it's a cool print. And I like cool prints, especially on whatnot. This is an REI jacket. So REI is a private label. And these don't always sell um, for a lot of money, but it will sell. And especially right now, it's winter. People are looking for outdoor gear. Next is gonna be these Nova Men pants. So normally I wouldn't pick these up, but they are new with tags. And size 40 is an excellent size. So I'm hoping to get these sold for at least $10 plus shipping. Here we have Patagonia. This is, looks pretty old. So I'm not sure if this is vintage or not. Um, I'm gonna guess it is vintage and probably early 2000s. You got a Patagonia back here. This logo is a little bit dated, um, but anything, especially this puffer, this puffer vest should do okay. This is a Madewell size medium sweater. Um, again, Madewell is one of those brands that I pick up all of them. Couple of t-shirts, Clemson Tigers, and a New York Red Bulls. I picked these shirts up because they are all new retro shirts. So new with tag sells well. This is the brand Victory, which is not a very desirable um, sports brand, um, but new shirts always sell well. T-shirts are not seasonal. So I would buy t-shirts when you find them. Next is uh, Marmot. Their logo looks a little bit like Motorola. So uh, Marmot jackets sell really well. This is another Columbia like fishing shirt, size extra large. And this SF t-shirt all over print. I pick up all local sports teams. You guys should pick up all the local sports teams. It's regional and it's stuff that you should always pick up. Now I'll move over to this rack. You got a Texas Tech Final Four. Again, this is from an overstock deal that I bought at the flea market. So these shirts are all brand new. Um, MSRP about 14 bucks. I bought them all from the same vendor. Um, and again, my average cost is about $4. So Golden State Warriors jersey. Um, this one looks super suspect, so I might not sell this. So just be careful when you're selling things. The stitching on this looks really bad. So um, I'm gonna guess this is fake, so we are not gonna sell this. Um, it's not really worth it to risk your account to sell fake stuff, so um, just get rid of stuff. It's not worth a few bucks. This is a vintage made in USA Fighting Irish uh, all over print. Very, very cool. Um, again, I pick up most t-shirts. This is Marmot. Um, Marmot's one of the outdoor brands that I buy every single one of. This is a pair of snowboarding jackets with the, ski, I'm sorry, ski pants. Rosignol is a really good um, ski brand. North Face, as usual, all fleeces. Columbia again. Columbia again, North Face again. So I find a lot of North Face, Columbia, Marmot, um, Cotopaxel, Smart Wool. One of the Bay Area brands I pick up a lot of is Beta Brand. So you can see this is a store return because there's a cross out on the brand. So a lot of store returns do that to prevent returns. So there are a lot of sample stores in the Bay Area. You need to figure out what's made in your local area and start to sell those. So Madewell does super well for me. Madewell, and we've got some True Religion. A lot of fakes with true religion, so be careful. If you are in doubt, don't sell it. Eddie Bauer, I pick up most things that are goose down. Made well again. Lululemon. So this I would rank as quality four out of 10 because you can see that the logo is cracking. So Lululemon, you need to be careful on condition. I usually can tell by um, the logo. This is the North Face. This jacket's pretty expensive. Um, on eBay, you'd probably ask 50 to 80 bucks. It is goose down and it has the fur vest or the fur, fur hoodie. 
Next is Dickies. Uh, I pick up all workwear, Dickies, Carhartt, Champion print, SF Giants, Reebok SF 49ers, Mountain Hardware, excellent brand. The furrier, the better. Um, Columbia, this is gonna sell for less because it has Dominican University on it, which is not a notable college. Columbia Titanium Pants. So all the Columbia Titanium series does well for me. Madewell Jeans, right here is where it shows the model and this is the mid-rise vintage. We got a vintage Super Bowl shirt. Made in USA on the Hanes tag. 1990, true vintage, 32 years old. Older than our cameraman. Scotch and soda. So this jacket's cool. It does have a little damage on the shoulder. I can't find the damage, but where's the damage? Right there. Ah. Just sneaky. It's <laughs> a little sneaky damage here. So I'm going to try to sell this for $5, but normally this would sell for about $30. Scotch and soda. Oh, Scotch and soda is this logo. That's probably why it was donated. Nike sweatshirt. This is Lululemon size four. Lululemon is great. If it doesn't have the size tag, the, the size is usually in the pocket. Carhartt. Carhartt Force does well for me. This is the North Face again. Adidas, Climate 365. Adidas unfortunately doesn't have the best resale value, but it does sell. Another college shirt, um, brand new. This is considered new old stock, so old shirt uh, from 2019, but brand new. North Face fuzzy jacket. So anything fuzzy is great. I love it when there's detail on the pull tabs. This is Nike. I pick up every single Nike that's in good shape. Nike sells really well. It's maybe the most recognizable brand in the world. This is Emporio Armani. There's a lot of different Armanis. This is a suede jacket, um, very European. Um, I'm, you know, this is something I would ask probably 60 bucks for on eBay and un has a nice pull tab also. Um, Nike sweatpants. Sweatpants are in. They call it athleisure for men and women. Sweatpants, oversized stuff. This is a pair of Orvis joggers. Nothing special. This, I believe, is the Avalanche. Um, so this is an official NHL jersey. I don't know my hockey teams, but I'm pretty sure this is the Avalanche. Yeah, Michigan. Adidas, a um, couple Madewell pieces. And my goal is to find 105 items a week minimum at $10 profit so I can make my $1,000 a week and have two weeks off per year. This is Lululemon, cool print. All Lulu that has a print sells for more. This is Pink Victoria's Secret. I like to have this. It's better when it has the dog. More Lululemon. And this one, the logo's in better condition, so I would say six out of 10. This is made well with these, what are these called? Pom-poms? Pom-poms, yes. Pom-poms, so the pom-pom design. More North Face. Nike. Ghostbusters t-shirts, so stuff like this does really well. Any, um, you know, retro collaborations in the North Face. Orvis flannel, size large. Adidas sweatshirt. Made well. Nike. This big print stuff sells really well for me. Oakland A's, vintage Nike. Nice Nike, I think this is George Washington. 
Minnesota Vikings jersey. Columbia vest. More Madewell here, two pairs of Madewell. Um, this is a nice leather Port Authority jacket. Genuine leather. One of our workers would say that's gross because she's vegan. Uh, Adidas. Um, this is Lacoste. Size 34. So sometimes they have European sizes, sometimes they have US sizes. More true religion. The crazier the design, the better. A lot of counterfeit with true religion, so be careful. Beta brand, size medium. Excellent condition. And again, I start all of these items starting at $1. More Lululemon. Um, this is LL Bean. This is a nice jacket. This is a fleece lined flannel shirt which is very, very warm and great for the winter. This is Madewell ribbed sweater with the pom-pom sleeve detail. Orvis crew neck, LL Bean sweatshirt. Under Armour. This is a Marmot size large shirt. These shirts are really nice. I've had a few for myself over the years. Oakland A's, Madewell again. Polo Ralph Lauren with the small pony. Polo sells well for me year round. This is Pima Cotton, super soft. Levi's. I pick up all graphic sweatshirts. Indianapolis Colts, NFL. Under Armour, extra large, loose gear. This brand I'm not familiar with, Paradox. Um, so if I don't know a brand, sometimes if my vendors have it, I'll pick it up anyway and look it up. I personally think this is probably low end, but um, sometimes I let my flea market vendors eat a little bit and I'll pick up some questionable brands. And sometimes I get lucky. This is a Seawolf. Um, oh, I'm sorry. I got this because of this um, logo in the back. It's kind of fun. Uh, Nike Air Jordan. Um, Full zip. This is an awesome REI two-tone jacket. And then I got this crazy Corella DeVille. Um, this brand is Langau. I'm gonna look it up later, but it's probably super valuable, but this is like a crazy coat. So great for a Corella DeVille um, costume. It's, it's pretty awesome. So I love that piece. So, okay guys, this is interesting. Um, I actually purchased 150 items at the flea market and I'm missing 50. So the super duper bowl that I wanted to share with you guys is Alpha Industries. So I don't know what happened to my jacket. I bought 150 items and it's not in the bags that I brought in, but it's the second time I found it. So we'll pull up the logo, Alpha Industries here so you guys can see what it looks like. These jackets can sell for over $1,000. The jacket that I got before was green and sold for about $75. It was a modern one, but Alpha Industries can be super duper expensive. So Make sure you commit this logo to memory and you will eventually find it. I found it a couple of times now. Really good brand, very expensive, very elusive, and it doesn't look expensive. So it's important to look up this logo and hopefully that was useful, guys. I want to go over all my finds every single week because this part of my business is replicatable. First item, this is an Adidas Seafoam top. It's US size two extra large female. Laura one, appreciate you. This is a San Francisco Giants hoodie. It's on an Antigua tag, size medium. This is also gonna be a class on how you price your items. So I'm gonna post this on YouTube as well and it's gonna go over kind of the prices that you can expect for these types of items when you resell yourself. And it's gonna go for obviously a lot more on eBay or Poshmark because you have the, the ability to reach more people over a longer period of time. So this next piece is Prana. This is a really nice flannel. BBB wins at $12, so Prana for $12. This is an excellent flannel. LL Bean. Size extra small regular, this is a really cute pattern. Obviously right now it's good to pick up a lot of outerwear, sweaters, coats, jackets. Size medium women's Paul Frank sweater. Lululemon green pants, these are leggings. They are size eight. 
This is an SF 49 or a San Francisco 49ers hoodie, size medium. Looks like a women's sweater or youth. This is Lacoste size nine. It looks like a double extra large. So 2XL Lacoste, really cool alligator, regular fit, designed in France, made in Peru, really soft organic cotton. Ralph Lauren, white sweatshirt. This is a small pony, size medium. This is a North Face Puffer girls pink jacket, guys. Really, really cute. Girls size large, could fit a ladies small, no problem. We got this Adidas size large. This is a really nice sweater. I would keep this, but I have plenty of clothes. Levi's 3XLT green sweater. Really nice piece. Carolina. This is on the Victory. This is a size extra large tee. Starting at $1 size extra large. Excellent condition. New condition, actually. Levi's black sweatpants size XLT with the Levi's hit on the thigh. Adidas hoodie size extra large. There's some really big heat in this one coming up soon, guys. So this Levi's sweatshirt is size X 2XL. It's got this cool stripe in the back. And look, they actually cut the tag in half to make it, which is funny. It kind of looks like a DIY, but it's definitely not. Lululemon, this is like a dark blue, maybe slightly purplish hoodie. It's size eight. Size eight women's Lululemon hoodie. Another Levi's black sweatshirt, size 2XL. Super soft cotton. Again, with a stripe in the back. 2XL black Levi's sweater. Great piece. Size 2XL, the toucan all over print, tipsy elves shirt. Brand new, size 2XL with the tag. All right, guys, this is a Bolo brand. Beta brand. Beta brand, size small. I would ask $55 on eBay for these. Really, really, really cool um, pr um, like whiskering on these, but these are the same material as yoga pants. Volcom, girls snowboard pants, size medium. Girls Volcom, snowboarding pants, size medium. Patagonia Purple Fleece, Capoline, size medium. This is women's, nice piece. Patagucci, as they say. We have a Polo Ralph Lauren pony, sweater, size large. To give you guys an idea, the stuff that I'm selling right now is about a third of the price is what I sell it on eBay for. Nike Dry Fit Hoodie with the Encore logo. This is a men's size small, Encore Volleyball. This is a very, very cute Madewell top, size two, super cute. Nike Dark Gray Sweatpants, Jordan brand with the tassel. Okay guys, so this is an insane jacket and I'm gonna share with you guys. And this is not a good form to sell it on, but we're gonna do it anyway. Okay, this is a Marilyn Monroe collaboration with Burt Stern, who's famous for photographing her. This is a Legence jacket, size medium, with an MSRP of over 1,000. This Dallas Cowboy, any Dallas Cowboy fans? Um, Pro-line starter jacket, made in Korea, with the starter uh, pin. This is a really dope piece. This pair of Legence jeans, size 25, is super wild, and I really like it. Um, MSRP on this pair of jeans is $295. It is new without tags. This is a store sample, Lejean size 25, crazy print, MSRP 295, sold at Revolve. Very, very expensive and cool. Lululemon leggings, size six, starting at $1. These have a multicolor interior, which is kind of fun. Levi's pants, 46 by 32. Yeah, cheaper than the thrift store. That's what I like to do. Okay, this is a really cool Levi's jacket, guys. Don't let me down. And by jacket, I mean sweater. Cleveland Indians, I think no longer, right? Didn't they change the name? Cleveland Indians pullover. This is really nice. Size extra large, really cool piece. Golden State Warriors heavy hoodie next. This is a reversible. Golden State Warriors bomber jacket. Champion, Northeastern University pullover size small. Champion hit on the sleeve. Carnegie Mellon up next. 
Carnegie Mellon half zip pullover. Columbia furry zip up jacket size large. This is girls large. Adidas SF giant zip up youth jacket size medium with the hood. Nike dry fit hooded pullover size medium. Men's really nice piece. Nice hoodie. We got a really cool Polo Ralph Lauren rugby shirt coming up next. Size large in the Michigan colorway. Blue and yellow, great piece. Great pony, size large. Reebok, size 2XL, fantastic size. Classic, classic hoodie. Texas A&M shirt that's brand new. Do you still want it for a dollar? It's a really good deal. Texas A&M shirt, one dollar. Melly Mel, you still want it? Okay. Polo Ralph Lauren small pony, 2XL pink polo shirt. That's a nice piece. Wu-Tang size medium on the Wu-Tang tag. Nice shirt. Pit the Pit is around 21. So size large could definitely wear this. Lululemon legging size four, guys. Nice purple color, eggplant. Lululemon up next. I believe this is called the Racerback Tank, size four. 
Here's the logo. I would say condition eight out of 10. This is a Boss Slim Fit shirt. Size 4116, which is the equivalent of a large. Super duper high quality women's hoodie, size medium. This is super thick, thicker than Champion. Has the Gremlin logo on it. American Giant. True Religion size 28. True Religion jeans sold for $14. Nike, double extra large, zip up jacket. This is a really nice piece. We got this Jeter shirt. Brand new, genuine merchandise. So brand new Jeter shirt, size extra large. I'm on the majestic tag. Brand new guys, Jeter. Nike Stanford hoodie, full zip, size medium. Stanford football guys, nice hoodie. Madewell jeans, perfect vintage, size 29. These are in great condition. Madewell knitted tank, this is really cute. Size extra large, so great Madewell size. Very cute with the tassels on the side. That's a nice piece. Polo Ralph Lauren, half zip pullover. Extra, extra large with the leather pull. This is a nice piece. This next piece is really cool. This is a men's extra large LL Bean. This is awesome. I'm gonna sample this for you guys. LL Bean zip up jacket, quilted, size extra large. I am a size large normally, but this fits okay. We got Lejeune's pair of jeans, size 25. These are insane and they have these sock leggings. This is wild. So MSRP, believe it or not, is $300. And these are brand new Lejeune's. Marguerite is the style. Okay, this pair of Lejeune's, size 25, also has a crazy detail at the bottom with these buttons. So the buttons go all the way down. This detail, again, these shoes are over, and these shoes, these jeans are over $300 MSRP, and they're brand new, unworn Lejeune's. Torrid jeans, size 10, brand new, unworn, new without tags. In the Capri, cropped style, with the distress already built in from the factory. These are unworn Torrid jeans, size 10, brand new, perfect condition pants. Okay, Lejeune's, these are $225 with the leopard print on the rear. Actually, these are more. These are way more, it's probably over 300. Lejean size 28, so much better resale size. These are unworn. These are really sexy, honestly. These are cool. Women's sweatpants size small, medium. There's no brand on them, so. This is in the Lejean's, but there's no Lejean's branding on it. But I'm assuming it's Lejean's since it was in the pile. And I'm sure these retail for over $200 are super soft. Really nice, really, really, really cute. These Paisley Lejeune's jeans are insane. So Lejeune's, you'll see right here on the button it says the brand, but there's no tag inside. These are brand new, unworn. Crazy, all over Paisley print. Again, Lejeune's is very expensive. These are over $300. North Face zip-up jacket. This is a women's small. Women's small, North Face zip-up fleece. Volcom jeans, size 30, men's. These are nice. Size 30, inseam is 32. Oakland A's postseason. Really nice hoodie. Size large. Polo golf, long sleeve, size large. Blue with the Bay Harbor Golf Club hit on the sleeve. Polo Ralph Lauren. These are plaid pants, size 30. These are cool. North Face rain jacket. Women, size medium in the teal colorway. Adidas, gray sweatshirt, sites 2XL. Fire and ice Burton, guys. Fire and ice Burton pants. This is made well. Blue jeans, size 28. The style is the 10 inch high rise skinny. Made well, size 28. These are great for resale, excellent condition. This is also a cool jacket. Sometimes I like to rock the merch, guys. This is a nice jacket. G-Star Raw, very rare. There's the model for you guys to screenshot. G-Star is ultra expensive, really nice. We have 14 items left, let's go. Adidas Klima, 
36 by 32. These are in excellent condition, nine out of 10. Golf pants. This is really important for those that wanna let people know what brand they're wearing. This makes it really obvious. Big color block logo box right in the center, Nike Air. In case you forgot the logo or the, the motto, it's just do it. Um, they don't wanna let you forget that. So it's actually on both sleeves. Made well, the slim boy jean. Made well. Living a dream with the made well for $1. Y'all are sleeping. Under Armour Navy loose gear, men's size medium. These are awesome. I love the back. G-Star Raw denim jeans, size 33. These are insane. I would ask $85 on eBay for these. Size 33 is an excellent size. Nike short sleeve hoodie. Men's size medium with the big Nike logo in the middle. At least a little bit more subtle this time. This is a really nice two-tone jacket, Alpine Designs, made in USA, made in Colorado. I love it, this is a really nice jacket. Made well, maroon jeans, size 27. This is the nine inch high riser skinny skinny model. Patagucci plaid shirt size extra large, great size, great pattern, Patagonia. And this is a snap. So not a button, it's a snap. All right guys, this is a girls extra large or women's small, black and pink North Face fleece with the hoodie. Okay, this might be the last piece in the regular auction. Made well guys, this is a cute light blue blouse, size small. Very simple. All right guys, so we just completed my whatnot show. Today I actually sold 169 items. So the total for the stream was $3,201. So starting next year, I'm gonna keep a running total all the way throughout the year. So today's show, the items averaged about $19 plus shipping. And as you guys know, my goal is to average $20 minimum plus shipping the entire year. So we'll see where we end up. But profit margin wise, every single one of the items that we showed earlier in the stream. Anybody can find at any thrift store. There was nothing magical about any of the items that I found. So this model is replicatable with pre-owned items. And I appreciate you guys letting me know in the comment section below what you think of this format, because I'd like to do it for the rest of the year. Appreciate you guys.